You know, many of you don't know. I once show people what's the meaning of deliverance. Can I show you? Yes. Eh? Yes. Come here, my little, come. This one is my pastor. This one is his blessing. He want this. In a prophetic a dimension. I have to tell him, this man, you know from here, you'll come here. You'll go there. You move here. You stop here. You reach here. And you end up touching this. That is prophecy. <laughs> that is what? That is why many of you are still confused. In deliverance dimension, which many prophets are afraid to deliver. Stand here. You don't need to know this nonsense. What you want is that one. Come and take it. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Many of us, we don't know the importance of what? Of deliverance. I, prophecies like we are taking a long time. I'm, not, I'm a prophet too. For me to say, when you move from here, remember what happened to Samuel when he met Saul. He said, when you move from here, eh, you are going to meet this and meet this and meet this. Ah, that was not important. What was important was the coronation. Are you hearing me? What was important was what? Coronation. So, you know, deliverance makes me to say, you will jump stages to go to a place where you belong. Yes. Huh? Yes. Today, I want to tell you, you don't need to know this and this and this, but you must take what belongs to you. Yes. <laughs> As I say, my friend, what is it that you, you want to know today? In prophecy, we have to tell you your name. In prophecy, we have to tell you what? Your name, your, your father's name, your magogo's name, your house, your, your age, and which is what you know, which is useless. So that you believe. So that you? Always when the prophet is saying, can you see this? Can you see this? Can you see this? So that you... What is important is to bring Jesus on the scene. Results. Tell me about results. So, if we don't see results, I mean, we have to question you. I mean, many of you now, your, your faith went down because of your expectations. I want you to revive yourself. Come back to yourself. Tell your neighbor, come back. Come back. Don't, don't feel like uh, you, somebody robbed you or lied to you. No one. You, your faith was supposed to have been encouraged to, to believe more that God can do it for you. Hallelujah. Amen. I've promised God that whoever comes here, if, if he believes on the foundation, his life must change. His life must change. If God changed my life, he can change us. I don't know if you are hearing that. Too. As I say, how is your situation? Can you ask the person again? What is the person saying? <laughs> Are you can we open the Bible? Okay. I want to teach you something, uh, but I think this is our principle. Remember, by what I was saying, I'm not 
I'm not fighting prophecy. Tell myself, I'm a prophet too. I have a gift of prophecy. No, no, I'm not in the office of prophet. No. I met a lady there, you remember? When was that? Eh? The lady, she said some. it is Wednesday. That lady, she said uh, she hates prophetic church. It's very, very wrong. She loved praying. She hates prophetic church. It's very, very wrong. Without prophets, it's without the Bible. But the Bible. You heard that? But you today, you don't need prophet. You need what? You need to never. Look at your life. It's not changing. Look at your life. It's not changing. Ah, do you know that uh, 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 after you are prophesied, you need to be delivered. So, so let's go straight to deliverance. Because after I have to say, your name is Joseph. And then you are going to meet this. There. Still, I have to deliver you. I don't know if you are hearing me. So, I don't know if uh, many of you want to deliver. Because you don't believe in that. How many of you want to deliver? How many of you, how many of you, how many of you, how many of you want to prophesy? Yes. Lift your hands too. It's good. Thank you. Clap hands for yourself. So the lady says she hates a prophetic church. Prophetic church. I was afraid for her. Therefore, it means she said there's no prophets. It was frightening. Okay, let's open the Bible. Let's read Luke 20. Luke 20. From verse 21 to 26. Luke 20, 21 to 26. Luke 20, verse 21 to they ask him, teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right and that you show no partiality to anyone but teach the way of God honestly and in truth. Can you see the verse? verse. <laughs> Eupsa orata tereshio mabapi liche umodimo anyaka wogore moto adidire. Is it lawful for us to give tribute to Caesar or not? But he recognized and understood their cunning and unscripturalness and said to them, Show me a denarius, a coin, whose image and inscription does it have? They answered, Caesar's. Na oleva nigeri nchecha kesara michelo Goba Gasi wa lebana Jeso alemua Boradia jwabona Gome are gobona Mponcheng papetana ya chelete Siswancho se kisamang Lili na le Bamo fetu lavari kicha kesara 25 he said to them Then render to Caesar The things that are Caesar's and to God, the things that are God's. So they could not, in the presence of the people, take hold of anything he said to it. He said to turn it against him. Kere, but marveling at his reply, they went silent. Kere are robona. Rona nchecha nkesara che ili rocha kesara. Limudimu limu ncheche che ili rocha modimu. Bapalelwa kiru motanya kasilo. Kasilo mopili rabatu. Let, let's pray, Father. Thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to look at these scriptures. I found a lesson out of 
what these people were asking Jesus. The approach of these people was Jesus. We know you are honest. Just, just write honestly. Honesty. Honest. Be honest. Be honest. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible shows that they show Jesus as an honest man. Bible even shows that they show Jesus as an honest man. The Bible shows that they show Jesus as an honest man. Bible shows that they show Jesus Jesus was having, I mean, everybody was talking about it. Authority. Everybody was praising him. In Israel, Israel, everybody was thinking that he is coming to take over Israel. Israel. When the disciples were chosen, they thought they are going to hold some portfolios. Under his so the approach of them was of checking Jesus honestly. If Jesus is honest about what he is there for. Jesus said show me in your coin Jesus will say I'm not in the coin Jesus was honest that though he is a king he is not king now because these people were coming to put him in a position whereby if he can agree he will be arrested by the pilot. Because he is going to put himself above Caesar. I don't know if you are hearing that. But because of his honest, he was able to silence them. I don't know if you're hearing me. The Bible says, he says, show me your corn, I'm not, I'm not yet in your corn. Don't put me where I'm not believing. Don't put me where I'm not believing. Jesus was saying that, don't put me where I don't belong. He answered them and said, Give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. The Bible says they were silent. Can I tell you this? Honest in your life will always be tested. Because that's what takes you to your position. Honest says to you, it's not you who takes yourself to a higher position, but it's God who lifts you to a higher position. Many people are dishonest. Because they want to go to a higher level. Many people are trying many things, but many formulas which are wrong way to go to a higher level. But this man was honest. Jesus was honest. And Lord, listen, I'm not your king. I'm not even in your money. When people ask you about you, are you honest to yourself? Because many of us here, we want to put ourselves in a position that we don't belong. This makes us to be left in our power. If you can be honest with your life today, you are also calling God to come and lift you to his 
to, to your power. Ahape uvicha mudimu rata u pagamisha u ishe mola usoni chungi ya wana. I don't know if you're hearing I that. Get I get say, are you on it? And the person says, are you honest? Yes, but are you honest? When you say you're a child of God, are you meaning it? When you say you don't want this, are you sure you don't want it? Many times I've been triggered that you know, hey, my I become honest, I say I want it. I never say I don't want it. And then, you know, in our language we say, I want it nine nine. It means I'm honest. Nine, 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 nine. Really, really, I need this money. The reason why many people fall from the grace when they come from honestly they enter a level of hypocrisy. You see, everybody can be a good pretender. Many of you, you are smiling just for the people to see. You are not, not honest. You are not honest. Many of you, you come together to give each other reports. Your report seems to be better. But if we can search deeper in your honesty, we find you are miserable. I don't know if you are hearing that. He who is honest face right to be right, wrong to be wrong. He can still face his weakness. And he's not afraid to talk about where he's weak. I don't know if you're hearing me. Do you think you're honest? Can I read a verse that defines honesty? Job 1 verse 1. Job 1 Job 1 verse 1. Job 1 1. Job was so honest. If you can read about Job, if you can read about Job, you'll be surprised why God blesses him. From verse 1 it says, there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And the man was blameless and upright. This man was blameless It's amplified Bible. Blameless and upright. In King James Version. King James Version. He said, this man was perfect and upright. It means this man. Even when you check him. You find he is perfect. I don't know if you are hearing that. That is mean. When you find him, you try to find him. You find that he's like Daniel. When they search, they search him. They must find his God. Whatever he's doing, he's doing it for God. Are you upright or perfect? This was a man in another land called Uz that everybody knew about it. Even heaven, heaven knew about it. I don't know if you are hearing me. Listen, this man I will tell you what he will do. When the children gather to make a party after they make a party 
he will sacrifice for them and go to God and say, maybe they might have done wrong. I don't know if you're hearing me. This man, he will cover himself and cover for his children. And you go to God and say, God, I don't know when they were making parts. Maybe somewhere, somehow, they might have done wrong. Forgive them. I mean, after they have been drinking, drinking, eating, eating, and dancing, dancing, he will go to God and say, God, if there is anything they might have done, forgive them. Let me try to show you what happened. To prove that himself was crying for them. And themselves were sinning. But they could not cry and change. That's why by the time of temptation they were destroyed. One time somebody came and said, hey, children are dead. Hallelujah. Amen. As I say, my friend, are you aware that God is checking you. Are you aware that you need to be honest yourself? Let me show you another verse. Maybe it's 2 Corinthians 8 verse 21. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 21. It says, Verse 21. That verse is telling us that before we act, we must judge ourselves whether it is worthy of our doings. 2 Corinthians 8 21. Let's read it. Are you there? Let me read it for you. It says, Providing for honest things. Not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of the men. If you can check this verse, it says that it might be the life of Job. Job could go to God. I don't know if you hear me. After the party, you will go to God. When they are partying, he's checking you. After the party, he goes to God. So the Bible shows that so honestly, Bible it's not something that must be done when there are people. Because also God is looking on us. There are Christians in front of people, but not before God. When you are honest, even when you are outside of people, I don't know if you are hearing that. Be honest. People say you are honest. People say you are honest. People say you are honest. It is possible that people can say you are not honest. But God say you are honest. Because you know you come to share, you sit here, you are standing up, you are dancing here, everybody is looking at you. But the question is, people can still say you are honest, but God say you are not. I can still preach and prophesy you. Whereas God says you are not. That's why my friend, when you are honest, it must be in front of God and people. If people say they are, you are not honest, you will prove them wrong at the end. This year, I speak victory upon your life. Your honesty will take you far. Your honesty will take you far. You know what is the meaning of honest? Other people are prospering in the wrong way, but you say no. Other people are doing this, but you say no. This is not my way. We are in a, in a, you know, I was telling another lady, I said, we are in a place where everybody wants to advertise him. When other people are advertising themselves, you say no, I can't do that. Let me try to tell you what I've, I've, I've learned. By Eunice, my wife. 
Eunice said to me one day, she said, you must never do things for TV. I said, what is the meaning of that? You must never do things for people to see. Because if you do things so that you show people, you won't do it tomorrow. Because God lived you by your faithfulness. I said, okay. Because I was crying to say, I want to have a TV. Okay, I want to go for TV. Let me first slot. She said, no. I want a slot. No, 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 don't. Until one day she said, hey, the way you're doing now, I'm agree with you. You're not doing anything to show anybody. I'm the first person to judge you. Are you hearing me? Okay, that's it. Okay, I said, okay, now. He said, okay, let's try to find a slot. That's how we start TV. Are you hearing me? We went to a slot. slot, 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 to another slot. slot. Until we have our team. Because honestly, when it's built up together, it produces character. When a character is visible, it brings forth fruits. Many of you here, you have got fruits without character. I'm sure I'm talking with you. I say, honest, brings out character. Character brings out fruits. Such fruits will never die. That's why you're blessed today. Tomorrow you're poor. It's because you were not honest from the beginning. You just jump up steps and you find yourself on top there before you're matured. That's what I say, Aretz. Which only can offer Aretz. Because when I say this, I say, Ah, Brutu Karu Rela Naviano. Ah, Kibu Lazo. I can't win. 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 I'm saying you, not you alone. Luke eight fifteen. It says. Luke eight fifteen. You know, Yari. Luke eight fifteen. Luke eight fifteen. That's what I say. Are you honest? Which only can offer Marapote. You know, Yona. All right. It says, Aaron. but on that, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. <laughs> You know, I know many formulas that can bring an answer. This one is the best one. By becoming honest. When you need them to pray, you are meaning it. You don't do it because it must be done. You mean it. When you open the Bible, you don't read it because you are meaning it. When you open the Bible, you don't read it because you want to find a scripture that suits your position. Because the Bible is your life. You mean it. So there is patience. It means. It's not something to wake up and you find it. It becomes part of you. Patience tells you that you are in the process. I don't know if you hear me. That's what patience says. It says you are in the process. You are in the process. You are in the process. In the, you reach there. There are some people here, God will bless you. you, you, you want, but you know, because of the people around you, they will kill you very fast. They will kill you very fast. We are not even aware of your surroundings. So patience makes wrong people to say, ah, nothing is happening here. And they leave you. Yourself, you move forward. You move forward. Until you reach your destiny. Today is your day. Tell them today is your day. You are not aware. There are wrong people 
enter your atmosphere and they have been polluting it diluting it and you were not aware but today now you understand that when you give out fruits you give them by patience today something must happen say it will happen say I believe something will happen Hallelujah. Amen. Shake somebody and say, hey, I might be looking like it's tough, but something will happen. So when you are, you know, when you are facing all this, so you are not aware. You are not aware that if you prosper with this one, Close. he will kill you or she will kill you to take it. allow people to leave you yourself you are honest when by mere honesty you are cutting wrong, cutting wrong relationship cutting some people cutting some people cutting some, people, cutting some things which are not needed so that it becomes suitable to everybody when I was becoming honest to myself, many of my friends ran away from me. me. I found myself going to pray. I just found myself going to pray. Until, until I become prayer. I could not know whether I'm praying or not. Have, have you ever find when you're not you're in fasting, but you don't know whether you're fasting. I, I found myself when I want to eat, I said, I don't know if you're hearing me. It becomes part of you. It becomes a character. It rips up wrong people out of you. And you become part of it. And from there, your God will show up. When you show up, you will realize that what God has done, nobody will steal it from you. I prophesy victory for you. Say I've got victory. Be honest with yourself. Okay, let me teach you what happened to me and Mama. I'm not saying I've arrived, but I want to show you. When we start the ministry, it was very tough. I heard a voice say, Call, call me by name. Leave this job. If you know mama becomes very rough sometimes. She say we suffer for this. We don't want people to play the gospel. We pay the price. You know what happened? I, you know I leave the job. Having a mind of the business I was doing. I heard a voice clear. You know, Mama was running my business. Mama in my in Pretoria, in Pretoria. Pretoria. So when I leave the, the job here, so I was happy because this what? because I leave the job thank you Lord because there is one huh? amen so I went there to the office because my mom always said can you see what is happening to you this thing is so strange I've told you to leave the job as God told you so always I'll be saying God tell mama I was still honest with myself I wanted something to hide so when I'm having business it was an opportunity so when I reached the business, so I give it a good business thing. I was saying, Mama, I've resigned there. Kara, Mama, get to it, chikwa. As you know, all the time, look what is happening. Me ta ebo na urudi alang. I went to the office there. Kaya ko office inkwa. I said, let's pray. Kara rapel. When I was busy praying, I get sa rapel. I heard Jeremiah. Kaya ko le bicho le le bicho kape. Leave even this business. Ki je tuwe la tuwe la le business e. I open my eyes. I look at Mama. Kaba la maso kala be la Mama. Mama, did you hear? Kara, Mama, ukile. Did you hear? Did you hear the voice say? I must leave this business. I was hearing it. 
to stop but I wanted mama to say no so that I will say God is this lady I didn't want to leave I don't know if you are hearing me eh? Amen. but I know the truth but I wanted somebody to be blamed so I said God I'm hearing that but I will tell mama if I tell mama mama did you hear the voice voice. mama say I didn't hear anything I heard the voice say I must also leave the business business. mama say yes "Ah." because I thought she would say I don't know if you are hearing that today today you must never have a reason of hiding from becoming honest. Because there's a level you can go for. I'm realizing that if I was doing business, I was not supposed to be where I am. You can't achieve where I am You cannot reach where I am because of So now I have realized that by becoming honest and agree by the honesty of mama. God has lifted me to where I could not reach by my ability. Today, you are going to pass your ability. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are stagnant because you are dishonest. When you get tight, oh, you look at it. Isn't? You want to tight, but Satan say, don't forget about the installment. And then you look at it. God, 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 can you see this? Increase it. You are in your house, but God is watching you. You are holding your mouth. God say, hey, go and give this mouth. God, forgive me. You know my thought. And if you forget, it's the same God who gave you what God say, wake up and pray. And you will see the God, uh, I'll see it two o'clock. When you sleep there, pass one day, feed you. You realize that if you might have done it, you could not eat on that time. There are many things that are happening because many people are not honest. I'm sure you are hearing me now. Say, I want to be honest. Sit up, put your hands up. Now, pastors, we need people who are honest. The moment you take somebody, say, come and be a worshiper. Christians must be honest. Pastors pastors can make mistakes. Are you hearing me? You tell them so you know. I'm a prostitute. I'm a prostitute. Help me, Pastor. I cannot sing there. I don't know if you are hearing me. You know, can you come here and become MC here? No, I'm a devil worshiper. I need deliverance. Some people who are like dressing good, nice things. They are being being used by us to achieve our goals. And we don't reach our goals. They don't reach our goals. Honesty will take you there. I prophesy honesty will take you there. Let us stop trying to search for things which are taking us nowhere. And we deal with ourselves. When some pastor say you are an usher, Come, we are choosing you to be an usher. Hey, the pastor, I'm still jolly. You're honest. I'm still jolly. Well, I can't be part of this. The reason why the church is diluted. diluted. You'll be surprised. People are just taking people because of what they do. Because they are 
That's what I say, my friend. You must be honest. Not long ago, I was looking on somebody's ministry. I was very much disappointed. Because everybody around us here must be right people. And I say, uh, if this man is a prophet, you need to know this one. Because at the end of the day, this will make the ministry. Think about if you are not honest, your family knows that. And we choose you. And now people know you are doing one to them. People will never come to that church. Satan will come and play there. Because of you, they know you. The ministry will never grow. It can have big number, but without Holy Spirit. I don't know if you are hearing me. My spiritual father said, the biggest church in South Africa. In South Africa, the whole South Africa. South Africa is the one without Holy Spirit. Which you know. And he said to me, you must never build a church because of number. Speak the truth. Speak the truth until everybody sees reality. Let me show you the last verse, maybe. First Peter chapter two. Verse fifteen. Verse fifteen. Verse fifteen. Pastor, are you honest? Are you there? Later, say. As I was saying, let's do it like, like a physical movement. As your neighbor say, are you sure you are honest? You know when you, when I preach this, I become disappointed. Because many of you are still jolly. Not long I hear that. Uh, yeah. If you want to marry the second wife, you can marry. As long as you have good reason to do it. People are no longer honest. These are the last days. The Bible says it will be difficult times. It's so difficult. That people are not honest. They are not even honest. Somebody says you are wrong, but he can't correct you. You talk about it. Are you hearing me? Somebody can still see you are wrong, but not, he, he just use it to put you down. People are not even honest. You know what will take as to hell. Is, is to fail to have honesty. It's to speak things that we can't do. If we ask many of you here, say, are you Christians? All of you will lift your hand. We just lift your hand like this. Are you going to have a... Uh, uh, are you going to have But yeah. after church here, you are going to your own heaven. The church nowadays is full of useless people. God, when he comes to church, he doesn't know what to do. Holy Spirit, when he comes to church, he finds people that are dysfunctioning. People that, you know, they are mixed up. Many people that they, we don't even know where they are going. Not long I was telling people that for me to plant a church, it will be coming from God. 
It's not because people want the church around them. It's better I go and preach to the people who are salvation. Paul says, when he was honest to himself, he said he wants to go where other people didn't go. Are you hearing me? He said, I want to go to the people where because he was, he was seeing what is happening. By honestly, in First Peter chapter two, verse 15, you can silence foolish people. Foolish people, they say there is no God. I don't know if you are hearing me. They say there is no one. You can silence them. Because honesty takes you to a higher level. This year, those who say, because you cannot silence people who are not talking. They are talking about you. They say you are going nowhere. This year, they will be surprised when you are going to a higher level. This year they will be surprised. They are talking about you. What they are talking, they will be surprised. God is doing the difference. There is a foolish man. You will silence that foolish man. That was a hey. If you are against me, you will be silenced this year. Whatever you are saying, it will backfire on you. Hallelujah. Amen. As I say, what is that is happening in your life? I prophesy victory in your life. This year, by living honest life, you will silence those who are checking you, those who are looking at you. They want to see where you are coming to They will be surprised. You have God. If you have God, you will reach your level. I don't know if you are hearing me. Let me prophesy you this year. This year is your year of showing off. When they search you, they will find that you have taken higher position. When they search you, they will find that you have got testimonies left and right. When they search for you, they will find that you are living a life that they cannot live. When they search for you, they will find that every day of you is a celebration. When they search for you, they will find that the life you are living, you are outside of competition. No one will compete you. When they search for you, they will be surprised. Hallelujah. Amen. Be honest to yourself. Be honest. The Bible says, resist Satan. You will flee. In, it. in other words, you are honest. You are so Because honest brings realization. Realization brings revelation. The moment you are honest, you will realize ah, this is not a place. I'm not. You will find revelation that will bring results. So many of you, you are not even know where you are. You are just crying. You want to get out, but you don't know where to go. But when you are honest, you will realize, oh, this is not my place here. Oh, this is something that is temper with me, so that I must sin against my God. So I'm stopping this. I'm holding revelation that will bring forth results. This year you will get your results. It must start from now. I say it must start from now. The moment I found this, I said, no, this, this life, this life here, life of poverty is not my life. Life of, of struggling. So the moment I found this, I said, no, 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 no. no. I cannot accept certain again. Even if I look poor, but I will look ahead. Don't look down, look forward. 
Because if you look around here, you'll be like a wife, wife of Lord. You will change there. And you will die there. It is your time to rise up and run to your destiny. It is your time to live your life. It is your time to take what belongs to you. It is your time to move forward in front of your enemies. It is your time to take your testimony and run with it to another testimony. If you believe, shout hallelujah. You cannot die there. Because whatever that makes you to be, listen, anything called dishonest, it's a nail to nail you there. I don't know if you hear me. If you do something in dishonest, way, how you it has nail you there. It's a break. It's a nail. Just nail your hand. Nail another hand. Nail you there. You die there. It is your time to rise up. Though you have got scars of life, what you were trying to do, you rise up from where they nail you and you go to where you belong. Say, I'm going to where I belong. How many of you believe that? It is your time to take over. If you are watching on the screen, I'm telling you, you wherever you are. When you are honest, God is lifting you. He is raising you. He is taking you higher. If you are watching you, God wants you to be honest about any situation in your life. You can look stupid, but God is raising you. You can look like you are a poor person, but you will never die poor. It is your time to rise up and walk it is your time to go to a place of your destiny. It is your time to live a life that you have been ordained to live. It is your time. Rise up. Don't stay back. Don't allow Satan to kill you there because you are born and bright to move forward. You are not born to die there. You are born to move forward. So don't die there because of the situation. Don't change your life. Because of the situation, if you are here, I'm here to tell you that today God is rising you, God is lifting you. It is your time to take your position, it is your time to move forward in front of your enemies. Say, I overtake, say, I overtake, say, I overtake. Somebody thought you would die there. They nail you because you don't have money. Don't worry about money. Worry about your God. The Bible says, do not worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. You take your position and take your stand and begin to move like a warrior. I prophesy victory in your life. Victory in your life. I see people who are laughing at you because of your situation. But I'm hearing God. They will never laugh at you again. I see you overtaking, overtaking, overtaking. Over, 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 I will speak in Sipula. I am passing. They thought you have been nailed by poverty, nailed by debt, nailed by situation, nailed by the sickness. But we are Buddha. I am passing by. Iriki Abuda passing. You can rather look stupid like it's tough in your life, like you've been delayed. But any delay will serve a purpose because your God is lifting you. Iriki Abuda passing by. Arrest. 
Nobody thought you would make it. Even for you to come here is by the grace of God. But listen to this. You were honest yourself and you said I want to reach the church. But God says I must tell you the level you were you are not in the level. Why? We are Buddha. You are passing by. We are Buddha. 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 Thank you, Buddha. I'm passing by. In finances, God is challenging. You are overtaking. We are fitter. In finances, you are overtaking. We are fitter. In promotion, you are overtaking. In your job, you are overtaking. In business, you are overtaking. I see you are overtaking. Say I'm overtaking. I'm overtaking. I'm overtaking. I'm overtaking. You are overtaking. Arez. Arez. Those who think you won't make it. But never, never, never look at so much. I wanted to say these words. Oh, Shem. They didn't know you are here. Today, as you are honest yourself, you look stupid. As you are here, you look stupid. There is competition in the atmosphere. Allow them to compete. But yourself, we are bold. I'm passing by. You know what is happening? You are just coming on the first line. And when you are driving, when they are in front of you, they are coming to meet you. 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 Keep watching, Charis.